The next paper is exactly about designing a better search space. Maybe the first one was going into too many details of what should be the size of my convolution, what should be the filter size, what should be the number of filters, what should be my activation, what should be the residual connections. Maybe that's too many degrees of freedom, and maybe that is good for one particular data set, maybe CIFAR 10, but what if you want to generalize to whatever architecture that you come up with to generalize it to ImageNet, okay? This was an assignment for you to watch it. Any questions about it? The framework is still the same as before. You have a controller RNN, sample architectures, train, adjust your gradients, but then this is about designing a search space. And in this case, it is NASNet search space. Okay, any questions? I, I have a, a couple of questions, uh, mainly for clarification. Um, so we need to apply softmax before each resampling um, of the hidden states to generate the probability for, for the resample, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and um, so we, within each block, we have uh, um, this definition that you can repeat this uh, uh, search process for B times B normally equals to five, but does that, but once this architecture is um, searched to be the optimal, is, is that normal cell or reduction cell repeated through the entire arch architecture or is, is each step individually searched? No, it's gonna get repeated. So you're gonna repeat the same normal cell every other uh, layer or every other block. Gotcha, that actually reduces a lot of work, I think. Um, and also, so with, within each cell, the, the adding or concatenation, that's searched. But in between each cell, that connection is always concatenation by definition, correct? Within each uh, cell, yes, this last step is always concatenation. But the other ones might not, maybe or maybe not. No. Okay, thank you. The other ones could be addition or it could end up being concatenation. But the architecture that the search space came up with is mostly addition. This is a normal cell, and this pattern you are going to repeat. Whenever you have this orange box, it is going to be of this form. And whenever you have this blue box, it's going to be of this form. Okay, and uh, the question on the chat is how computationally expensive is this with all the different architectures? It is really computationally expensive. It's going to take you, for instance, this process is going to take you two or three days if you have 450 or 500 GPUs in front of you. So it's going to be 500 GPUs working together for two or three days, and then you can compute the total GPU hours. If you have one GPU, how many hours is going to take you? Because each time you sample an architecture, you have to train it. And the question is, so I shouldn't try this at home? No, you shouldn't. Okay, this is not given out your constraints. You're not going to be able to train only. You're going to be able to only train once, let alone thousands or millions of times. This is not going to happen for you. This is for bigger companies like Google, like Amazon, that they have their resources, like Microsoft, Facebook. And then there is another question on top of that. Is it possible to put the number of operations required for an architecture in the loss function? so that there is a balance between accuracy and mother complexity that is found automatically during backpropagation. That's perfect thinking, and we are gonna do that next, either this session or next session in another paper. So not only accuracy matters, you want to come up with a model that is as small as possible. There is another question, uh, how do you judge a hyper-training data set is similar enough to the training data set, or can you just use any data set that does the same task to train the hyperparameters? So that's a good question. Let's say you come up with an architecture for CIFAR 10. Is this architecture generalizable? If you go to another data set like ImageNet, are your learnings, whatever that you learned here for your normal cell, transferable? And this is actually one of the questions that this paper answers. And the answer is yes. They are getting, at that time, they are getting one of the best architectures 
one of the most accurate ones. Does that answer your question? If they are using, there is another question. If they are using RL, I would imagine you could add a component to the reward function that penalizes model complexity, of course. And then it's going to end up being multi-objective optimization. And then you need to say, uh, how do you want to balance the trade-off between making your model as accurate as possible and making it less complex? We're going to cover that, so don't worry about it. And there was another comment that it, this process is going to take a while, and that's a valid comment. In the future slides, we are going to try to reduce the cost of doing that and make it manageable, maybe using four GPUs, maybe using one GPU in one day, do the same thing. We are going to try to do that next, later on. Any questions? Any other questions about this? So what are some good ways to initialize the the first two initial hidden states. Is that kind of arbitrary or is there a process? Oh, these two, uh, at first you know them. For this, uh, let's say you're looking at this normal cell, H I minus one or H from the previous layer is gonna come from this reduction cell. And then the other connection is gonna come from here. So you have two residual connections, one from here. And this one, you cannot call it residual. This is just the input. So the first two H, H1 and H2, you know them. You don't have to make any decisions. One of them is here, the other one is here. Does that answer your question? Yeah, well, if you start from the input set, then you only have one, right? You have to do some yes. kind of initial operation. Yeah, so that's just straightforward. You take your image, you put it through, you push it through your normal cell. Okay. The first one is an exception. And then you also have N of these normal cells on top of each other. So each normal cell is going to look at the previous normal cell and the normal cell behind it in one step before, and then it's going to constitute H1 and H2. And then one other comment is that you are not changing your resolution or dimension from uh, within these normal cells so that you can add whenever you want. And whenever you concatenate, you're going to follow that by a one by one convolution to project everything back to the correct dimension. Okay, so there are these minor details that matter. That makes sense. Thank you. Yeah.